On this video, we will explore the conveyors. So the conveyors already exist in AnyLogic in uh, the process modeling library. Here you can find it. But this conveyor is simple. In the material handling library, we have a much more detailed conveyor with more elements and more options. So let's explore this a little bit. We have to differentiate between the conveyor in the space markup and the blocks that generate movement in the conveyor. So let's start exploring the conveyor as a space markup. So this is the element that will represent the conveyor in your system. Let's make it straight and we will change the scale a little bit in order to make it bigger. So we have here a big visible conveyor that we can use. So let's check what we have as options with the conveyor. So we have different types of conveyors. We have the roller in which the different items that are moving through the conveyor uh, move independently. Then we, will, we have the belt in which everything moves together. And we have the fixed cell, which is the same as the belt, but with the difference that in the fixed cell, you have certain cells that are defined positions for each item that is in the conveyor. All the types in the conveyor have the same uh, properties, which is maximum speed, initial speed, acceleration, and deceleration. And the gap, which is the di minimal distance that you can have between one item and the other. The fixed cell has one more parameter, which is the cell size. So the default is 1.5 meters, which is the size of the cell, that is present in the conveyor. Everything else is the same. Just to see here, if you change the cell size, for example, to four, there's not really a change here visually, but if you run the simulation, you will see the difference. Here in the simulation, we see a cell that is four meters long. But if we change this back to 1.5, which is the default value, in the simulation, we will see the accurate representation of this distance. The same with the gap, 0.2 meters as a default. If we change it to one, we'll see that the gap, which is the distance between the different cells, changes. So we have a larger gap. So let's get back to 0.2. And well, these things are not represented graphically for the belt or for the roller. And you can see the effects of the gap only when you see items in the conveyor. One other thing that is elemental in when you use the material handling library is that the elements or objects or agents that are moving through the conveyor should always be of the material item type. Let's explore this a little bit. Let's create a material item type and let's call it box because when you create a material item type, the default object is a box in three dimensions. And that's it without any parameters. If we explore a little bit, the difference between an agent type and a material item type is this square that you can see, we'll zoom in, you will see this uh, square that surrounds the box that we have here. And now that we are here in the box, which is an agent type anyways, but it's an extension of the agent type. So it has the same properties that the agent type has, but it has additional properties that are associated with the material item. So one of the things we can do is to change the length, width and height of the object or agent. Uh, and if we change, for example, the length to 10, you will see that the size of this material item will be actually 10 independently on whether the object that you're using the 3d object is smaller or larger the actual size will be considered as the dimensions you choose here as you see if you change the use in flowcharts as agent instead of material type the square disappears so let's try to use the material item always if you're using conveyors from the material handling library. Okay, let's go back to main and we will now select the material item type that will be used by the conveyor as the box. 
Now let's try to move something through this conveyor. Even though we are using the material handling library, which is actually an extension of the process modeling library, we still use the process modeling library uh, blocks, such as the source, to generate an agent. So this source will generate a box and we will use the convey block in order to move that block through the conveyor. And we can use the sync to finish the existence of that box. Now, the other thing we need to do is to define how is the conveyor going to be used. We see a small arrow here, which means that the conveyor starts on the left and moves towards the right. So this arrow points towards the direction of the movement. So we can use the convey, we can define the source conveyor, which is the starting position of this movement. Obviously is the only conveyor we have and you can choose between the beginning of the conveyor and the end of the conveyor. Obviously, we want to start in the beginning, which is here, and you can define an offset. So let's not define an offset yet. You can also change the orientation, That we can try that in a bit. Then you need to define the destination, which is the same conveyor, but this time is at the end of the conveyor. Let's keep the offset as zero as well. The rest, we're going to see it in another video. But if we run it like this, it's going to be problematic. We're generating one box per second from the source. So what is going to happen? The first box is able to go into the conveyor, but the second doesn't have space to enter in it because the first box is using the, that space. So we need to increase the capacity, but we can't. So what we have to do instead is to add a queue that we can place before the conveyor. Let's maximize the capacity and we can run the model now. And now we won't have any problem because there's enough space to move the boxes. But there's a problem here, you see? The box actually starts very oddly uh, in the vacuum. It's not over the conveyor yet. And that's why we maybe need to use the offset to make it more natural. That means that in here in the conveyor, we can use a source offset and I like to use the agent length. So the agent length can be used as long as you have the correct orientation. So let's assume that the orientation is, is the same as we saw before, but now if we run the model again, you will see that the box starts on the conveyor. We can even pause the simulation a little bit when the, the box enters. So here we can pause the simulation just to see when the box enters the conveyor. So you can see that the box enters exactly as we want. Maybe we want that. I don't know. Depends on your model, but it starts when I define the source offset. But what if we change the orientation? We have different options for an orientation. Uh, front, rear, left, right. So if we use left now, our source offset will not work as nicely. So the box starts here and it's not what we want. And this happens because our offset is the length. But we can change this to the width and run it again. And you can see that surprisingly, it starts in the same position, even though I'm using the width. Why do you think that is? And the reason is what I said before during this video is that the size is not defined by the object itself, but by the square that surrounds this object. So we, you can change the width. Let's change it to 0 0.5, which is more or less where the box is. We can move the box a little bit, but let's keep it that way and run it. Now the box starts in the right place. There's a little bit of space there because we didn't match perfectly everything with the box, but you can do it yourself if you want. Now let's explore a little bit the other options. So there won't be any difference between the ro roller and the belt in this case, they will act the same way, but we can see a little bit of a difference with the fixed cell. So let's run this and let's see what happens. The box starts as we want it. And here you can see that the boxes are to the right of the cell. So there's a lot of free cell space. Now, what if we change the cell size to, for example, 0.2, which is smaller than the box, 
Well, obviously you can't do that because you need for the cells to be at least the size of the box. And you can see here that everything is saved in the queue because nothing fits into the convey. So nothing is put into the convey. There's no error, but nothing is functioning as you want. 